Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and in today's video I'll be showing you how to create this parallax effect for your filters on Instagram and Facebook. As you can see, it combines layers to create the illusion of depth in a scene, and is most commonly used in 2D animation for things like video games and cartoons. Animators will tend to use something like this, uh, instead of animating a backdrop by hand because it's a lot simpler and gives people more time to work on the, the things that people pay more attention to, like details in a face or in a character design. Uh, whereas a backdrop is a lot simpler and is something that people don't really look at as much. I'll also show you how to add these clouds into your scene, which I uh, already have a tutorial for, so I'll leave a link to that in the description and give you a couple of ideas on things that you can use this for. With that being said, I'm going to pause this now and create a new project, so don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment and let me know what you thought of the video because I really enjoy making them and I love your feedback. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so now we have our new project, but we still need some assets to load in. If you don't already have your own created, then I'd recommend using Google just to get you started. There's a lot of inspiration on here that will help you with your own creations, or just as a jumping off point to help you learn. Uh, I typed in something like this, and it gives you a lot of examples. This is uh, maybe good, but maybe not. Uh, you want to make sure that the left side and the right side of your image are on the same position on the y-axis just so that the loop is continuous and doesn't have any jarring disruptions that will break the effect. I found this website here, joshmaroney.com, uh, and he has an article called How to Create a Parallax Background in Phaser. We won't be using Phaser, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I will be using his assets, which are down here. So he has these three templates here. Uh, I've opened them in new tabs and I've downloaded those. They may be copyright images, but I'm not gonna be monetizing them. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I feel like it's okay just to use them as a demonstration. Uh, so what I've done is I've downloaded all of those. And also what I've done for this main mountain here is I've duplicated the image and I've flipped it so that I have the exact same thing but flipped over. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do inside of Spark is add an object and we're going to add a canvas to our scene. I'm going to rename that just to Scene and I'm going to add a rectangle inside. I'm going to rename the rectangle to Background and then I'm going to make it fill the width and fill the height. So now we can create a material for that. We can call that background as well. Make the shader type flat. And now you can change that to be any color you like. But for the purposes of this, I'm gonna make it look similar to a skyline. So we'll have it be a nice blue. Now I'm gonna duplicate that background. I'm gonna rename it camera, hopefully, camera. And now I'm gonna come up to the actual camera in our scene, the one that's nested in the device. And I'm gonna hit these checkboxes for segmentation and texture extraction. Now if we come back to the camera here that we've created, add a new material. Rename that camera as well. And also change the shader type to flat. Now we can add our camera texture here. And if we check this alpha box, then we can also add this person segmentation mask, which will cut us out from the background and allow us to still see the blue that we've added behind. If you're finding that there's a little bit of blur around the edge or that the two are blending together, then you can come under the person segmentation mask texture here and you can adjust the edge softness and the mask size. These are the settings that I like to use. Uh, but you can play around with it until you find something that you're happy with. Usually 2.65 or 2.56, just sort of depends, somewhere in that range. But it creates this slightly sharper edge that you just want to be careful because if you go too far, it will look kind of strange. But play around with it, see what you get. And then once we've done that, we can come back up here to the scene and duplicate the camera one more time. This time I'm going to rename it Clouds. And I'm actually going to drag that one above the camera because in terms of layers, things that are lower down are actually sitting on top in your scene. So this background is behind everything else and then the clouds are sitting in front of the background and then the camera is sitting in front of the clouds and the background. So keep that in mind. But now we have this, we have the clouds here. I'm going to create a new material for that, which I'm going to rename clouds. Like I said at the start of the video, I do have a tutorial explaining how to make these clouds and create this animation style. So feel free to check that out, links in the description. But for now, what I'm going to do is under texture, I'm going to create a new animation texture that will appear down here in our assets panel. And now I'm going to choose a new image texture from my desktop. I'm going to select the clouds and I'm going to select everything in here apart from these three. So I'm going to choose all 24 of the frames that I've created for my cloud and I'm going to import those. It might take a second just while it loads up. And once that's done, you can see that the white background has gone again. It's transparent and we can see our blue behind but we're also met with these clouds. By default, it's at 25 frames a second. I'm using 24 frames, uh, and I could have it at 24 frames per second, but I'd rather play it back on twos just to give it a little bit more time to move across the screen. So I'm gonna drop that down to 12 frames. And now you can see we have 
pretty nice effect coming along. Pretty, uh, it's looking pretty good. And what we're going to do now is add in our mountains. Okay, so now we need to drag our assets into the scene. As you can see here, I have my original three mountains. My, ma my background one, my middle one, and my foreground one. And what I've done is, if you're using a Mac, this is quite easy. I've opened them up, I've selected the tool, and I've flipped it horizontally, and that's about it. And then I've duplicated that so that I have the reversed version of each one as well as the original one. So now if I select all of these, I can drag them in, and they will appear in my assets panel. And now that we have all those in the scene, what I'm going to do is control select all of them. And under this manual compression option, I'm going to select no compression, just so that there's no compression when I export it to test on my device. Okay, so now I'm going to come up to this canvas we've created and duplicate the camera rectangle. I'm going to rename that mountain back one, and I'm going to duplicate it so that we have two of those. And then I'm going to duplicate it again so that I can rename this one mountain mid one and duplicate that. And I'm going to do the same thing for the back, for the foreground, sorry. So mountain four, one, and I'll duplicate that. So now we have six rectangles here, all in front of our background clouds on our camera. So when we place the mountains on top of them, they will be in front of this person that we've created. Okay, so let's do that now. We'll create a new material for this one, mountain back one, and I'll rename it exactly that, mountain back one. And I'm going to do the same for all six of them. I'll skip forwards now so you don't have to watch me do that entire thing. Okay, and now I have all six of these materials created. I want to highlight all of them. I'm going to change the shader type to flat. And then I'm just going to assign each one to the correct uh, rectangle. So mountain one is done. Mountain back two is done. And foreground two. Okay, so now that that's done, as you can see, all of these layers are visible on top of the existing layers that we have, which is why you can no longer see the camera or the background or the clouds or anything like that. Now, if I come into each one again, I can add a texture and I can pick the textures that I want. So for the background one, I'm going to choose back. And then for back two, I'm going to choose the reverse that I've created. And I'm just going to do that for all of them. Okay, so now that we have all of our materials set up and they're all connected to the right rectangles here with the right textures that we've imported, you can see it's a little bit all over the place. Things aren't looking so great right now. So what I'm going to do is make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to switch over to the 2D perspective. And now if I select each one of these, highlight them all together, I can actually just reduce the size a little bit, bring it down uh, like that. And if I do the same thing for each layer separately, so the background layer will be the, the tallest one, the middle one will be slightly smaller and then the foreground will be the smallest one of all. So you can see what that looks like. Pretty nice effect already. You can see it coming together. Now we need to add some interactions. So I'm going to show the patch editor here, and we'll get started with creating some of those. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is drag this up, make a little bit of space, and zoom in on this so that we can see it more clearly. And then I'm going to add a screen tap. So double tap in your patch editor. And don't add a screen pan, but add a screen tap. I'll zoom in a bit so we can see it. And then from here, I'm going to add a loop animation that will automatically connect this switch in between, so you don't have to worry about that. Although you can add it manually if you like. From here, out of the progress output, I'm going to add a transition, which I'm going to change from vector 3 to vector 2. Then I'm going to copy and paste it so that I have two of those. And now I'm going to take our mountain back 1 and mountain back 2, which are the largest background mountains that we have, and I'm going to select their positions and make them patches inside of our patch editor. Now drag them so that you have one for each. And as you can see, our y-axis here is the same for both of these. I'm going to take that number before I connect it up, and I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it to be the start and end position for our y-axis on these transitions, because we don't want the uh, mountains to move up and down. We just want them to go left and right. Now, uh, I want the mountains themselves to go left from the right towards the left of the screen, as though that we are moving past them, for example, in a car or something. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this one at 375 and I'm going to end it at 0. And I'm going to start this one here at 0 and I'm going to end it at minus 375. And now if I hit play, then you'll see, oh, I have to actually connect them up first. But then you'll see that, yep, they are in fact moving across the screen. Uh, the loop animation is very fast right now. The duration is one second. So if I reduce that down to maybe eight, then you'll see it moving from right to left across the screen, both of them together. And when it hits the edge, 
when this one hits the edge, this one is also going to hit the edge on the other side, and then it will just loop and repeat and loop and repeat, which is exactly the effect that we're after. Now we're going to copy this and do it again for the others. So copy your transitions and also copy the loop animation, drag that down. We'll still have it coming from the same switch and the same screen tap. And now we're going to do the same thing for our mountain mids position here, make those patches. Bear in mind that the Y axis on these will be slightly different because they're smaller than the, uh, the previous ones that we've just done. So copy and paste your new Y axis for this 504 in this case might be different for you. Copy and paste that. So it's the same for your start and end position in your new transitions. And you can leave these X values as they are because we want the, uh, the same thing. We want them moving from right to left, not up and down. So now if I connect this up, you'll see that that also now is moving from right to left but it's moving at the same duration as the previous one. So if I come into our loop animation and I drop that down to, for example, six seconds, and you'll see now that it's moving a little bit faster than the one behind it, which is what we want, because things that are closer to us appear as though they are moving faster than things that are further away. You can see this for yourself just by looking out of a car window while you're driving down a motorway. Now we're gonna do that again, one more time, copy and paste our transitions and our loop animation, drag those underneath, and do the same thing for our mountain foreground. Copy those positions, take our new Y coordinate, which in this case is 603, make it our start and end position, and then we can leave the X values as they are. Now I'm gonna reduce the duration of this from six seconds to four seconds, so that it's moving even faster still. Connect them up, and you can see it working immediately. Now if I make this huge, and I get rid of the camera for a second, I'll make that invisible. Now you can see the mountains moving from right to left across the screen. And the ones in the foreground, the ones that you would perceive to be closer, are moving faster than the ones that are in the middle and the ones that are in the back. It creates this illusion of depth, this illusion of movement, and I think it's a really cool effect. I've shown you how to do the clouds as well, just to give you an example of the sort of things you can do with this. Uh, you can add anything you like, maybe an animated sun or some birds flying across the screen or really anything. I'll make this a little bit smaller and you can see how it's working behind the scenes. So this is what's actually happening. If I highlight both of these, for example, then you'll see that when this box here hits the very edge of this screen, this one will also do the same, and then it just repeats. It resets back to its start position and loops around. And because of the way that it's set up, where uh, the start and end position of this image is on the same level, they're on the same y-axis position, uh, it, it, it creates this seamless loop, which is really cool. I love this effect. Uh, I'll pull out again so that we can see the patch graph. Very simple. What we've done here is create a new scene, canvas here with a background, which I've colored blue for the sky. I've added my animated clouds, which uh, as I said before, there's a link in the description if you're interested in how I made those. Uh, and then we've got all of these mountains here creating depth, which uh, is pretty cool. We've, in we've added some interactions using loop animations and transitions, and we're having them move from right to left across the screen uh, rather than up or down or anything like that. You can play around with these, you can play around with the assets. If you're using something other than a mountain, maybe you do want it to go up and down instead of left to right or right to left. So that's where the experimentation comes in and that's where I hope that your creative ideas flow forth because that's all this is, is a tutorial just to give you the basics. I'm gonna add the camera back in. I'm gonna switch over to the FaceTime camera so you can see me again. So yeah, that's the entire tutorial. I uh, hope you found this useful in some way. Leave a comment below if you did. Let me know what you want to see next time. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to stay notified whenever I upload new videos. Sometimes I live stream as well. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to say peace out and I'll see you next time.